everyone, welcome back. Today I wanted to share a little bit about the purpose behind the homebody and what uh, caused me to start all of this. Um, I moved out to LA when I was 17 and I noticed that a lot of people who you know, were young or living in small spaces as that typically happens in big cities um, and definitely living on a budget, a lot of people I knew really weren't even trying to um, make their apartments or spaces feel like home. So I really grew this passion to cultivate home no matter what the size or the circumstances. It's no easy task to find an affordable place that you love in Los Angeles. And if you, Abby is digging. After my marriage ended, it was a really challenging, exciting process for me to figure out how to make this place feel like home again. It was easy enough for the people on the outside to tell me I should just move or look for a different apartment, but if you've ever lived in a big city like Los Angeles or New York, you understand how difficult it is to find a place that you love that's remotely affordable in the area you want and all of those things. There were a lot of factors, but ultimately I, I found this apartment and I really, really loved it. So it was important to me and my redemptive healing process to figure out how to make it feel like home. It definitely took some time. Um, grieving items, things, I got rid of a lot actually overnight on Craigslist. I had a girl come pick up almost all of my furniture completely for free because I just wanted to clear the space and start from scratch. One of my favorite projects is my closet library. That was an interesting process because typically when we have extra storage, we fill it with stuff and I'm all about less stuff and more life. So I slowly but surely started getting rid of the things that I was essentially just hoarding in that closet, suitcases, extra clothes, that kind of stuff. And I wanted to turn it into this beautiful, peaceful, restful, meditative space for me. This closet was actually packed with clutter, storage, suitcases, extra clothing, bags, that kind of stuff. I got rid of a lot of that, reorganized, cleared out the space, and turned it into a usable space for me with something that I actually needed, which was a peaceful place to sit, read, and relax. I am able to keep succulents and different plants in here due to the amazing window and light that I get in this room. Down here I have a portrait of my grandmother from when she was 19 years old, so that's one of my favorite pictures of her. I actually named this plant Grandmother Willow after her and Pocahontas. I got this chair from Goodwill a few years back for $10, so it's a great place to look for furniture and you can always reupholster, which I've done. I actually got this string of lights and this faux fur rug just to kind of bring together the whole cozy, bohemian, relaxing vibe. I also have some of my gardening tools in here hanging up to keep those organized along with some of my photos for inspiration. This is actually one of my favorite books right now. I've actually read through it a few different times. It is Wabi Sabi. It's a great book for artists and designers. It's actually a Japanese philosophy that's all about working with things that are imperfect and incomplete. And that really is the story of my home, how I you know, kind of had to make it my own all over again, give it new meaning and new life. And that's definitely something that I've done with my closet library. So that was my closet library. Um, if you have any random odd spaces in your home that are just taking up space or taking up clutter, consider doing something like that. Stacking books, adding candles, plants, life, um, so that they have more of a use and something that brings you joy. Um, make sure you head to rachelleestroud.com for more fun and resources and updates, and I will see you guys next time.